thank you all very much for joining us for today's podcast program brought to you by ACRO. I'm Fraser Cobb, the Executive Director of the organization, and we're pleased to deliver this program with an update from accreditation. Um, I'd like to introduce today's host, Brian Lally. Dr. Lally is uh, a board member of the ACRO Board of Chancellors and will serve as our host for tonight's program. Brian? Thanks for the introduction, Fraser. During today's program, we'll be discussing the new partnership between the Radio Surgical Society and ACRO and the resulting in the development of a special distinction in stereotactic radiotherapy. We have three guests with us today who have intimate knowledge of this new program and the vision behind its development. First is Dr. Heppel from Brown University. He serves as the medical director for ACRO's accreditation program. Second is Simon Lowe, who is the medical director for the distinction in stereotactic radiotherapy and is from the Radio Surgery Society. And last is Dr. Stanley Benedict, who is the physics director for the Radio Surgical Society Distinction in Radiotherapy Program. Thanks for being with us here today. I am looking forward to learning more about this program. But I'm gonna start with Dr. Heppel. Jarek, can you start by telling us just how you set up the foundation for this program? Give a little bit of the background and the history of the ACRO accreditation program and how you think this new program is going to be involved with ACRO accreditation and evolve over the coming years. What sets it apart from other programs? So uh, let me start by giving a little history of uh, ACRO accreditation. Uh, ACRO accreditation has actually been around for more than 25 years. Um, ACRO as a society in 1995 saw that there was a, a real need for an accreditation program that was really specific to radiation oncology and not to other subspecialties. And uh, ACRO at that time uh, first developed the ACRO accreditation program. Uh, the program has gone uh, undergone many uh, uh, improvements over the years. In 2010, uh, there was a significant uh, improvement in the program under the uh, um, direction of Dr. Kettle. Uh, at the time, uh, we developed a whole new program, uh, which was really uh, designed to bring uh, uh, our accreditation program into the modern era. Uh, part of this was uh, to uh, move away from paper chart reviews uh, and uh, really uh, uh, modernize the process by having the process uh, uh, almost entirely electronic. Uh, I took over direction of the accreditation program in 2016. And my goal and vision for ACRO accreditation is to have ACRO accreditation be the best choice for practice accreditation for radiation oncology. Uh, and what ACRO offers is a, a really a comprehensive review of all of the QA standards and uh, radiation pro uh, um, protocols and processes for practice. Uh, what really sets uh, ACRO accreditation apart is that we have a very transparent process. Uh, all of our standards are clearly defined uh, and uh, uh, all of the reviews are given to the practice so they see exactly where uh, the practice has shortcomings so that they can improve the practice. But this is really designed to minimize any bias in the review process. Uh, Additionally, ACRO accreditation is practice focused. Uh, we really want to help practices uh, uh, update their standards to the most uh, uh, up to date QA processes and treatments uh, approaches. Uh, we're really uh, focused on helping practices uh, achieve this. Uh, a, a reflection of uh, how uh, high quality our process is. We actually, uh, in ACRO accreditation, are the only accrediting body that is actually ourselves accredited by ISO. Uh, and finally, uh, what really sets us apart from other accrediting bodies is we are really looking at innovating uh, accreditation, bringing it to um, uh, uh, modern times and modern processes. And uh, this partnership is really a reflection of, of the innovation that we're, we're seeking with ACRO accreditation. Thanks for that background, Jarek. Um, I wanted to next ask Dr. Lowe and Dr. Benedict if they could discuss some of the initial stages of this partnership and how RSS became interested in working with ACRO to offer the special distinction. But before they get into that, I wanted to first ask Simon 
if he could tell us a little bit about the jerseys over his right shoulder. The red jersey is the away jersey for England, and the orange jersey is the um, um, home jersey for the Netherlands. So can you tell us, um, since we have all these soccer fans on this call today, maybe we should get back into talking about the RSS and ACRO accreditation program. I'll let you guys talk about that. But at the end, I promise we'll have some talk about soccer and let you and Fraser go at it. How is that thing? That's good. So the Radio Surgery Society, also called RSS, is a multidisciplinary nonprofit professional medical society consisting uh, of um, radiation oncologists, neurosurgeons, surgeons, and uh, medical physicists, as well as dosimetrists, nurses, administrators, and healthcare providers dedicated to advancing the science and clinical practice of stereotactic radiation surgery and stereotactic body radiation therapy and advancing therapies. And the purpose of RSS is to champion the evolution of science, clinical practices, and technological innovations in the fields of SRS, SBRT, and advancing therapies by providing an international forum for collaboration and, and education and encouraging um, global adoption of techniques offering optimal safety and efficacy for patients. So in 2020, ACRO recognized the rapidly changing landscape of radiation therapy with exceedingly more radiation centers offering patients SRS and SBRT. However, there were no accreditation programs specific to SRS and SBRT. Therefore, it became the goal of both organizations to work together to develop a comprehensive accreditation program specific to SRS and SBRT, clinical practice and physics quality assurance. So um, Dr. Stan Benedict can talk a little bit about the physics piece. Yes, so actually the uh, RSS has a long and well-established record of working on improving quality assurance and quality improvement for uh, stereotactic radio surgery in concert with other organizations. One example of that is the AAPM RSS Medical Physics Practice Guideline 9.8 for SRS and SBRT, which was published in 2017. And this is actually a nice um, guide that will be uh, used in part for this uh, ACRO uh, distinction um, by the physicists. Stan and Simon, that was a lot of great information. I was wondering if you guys could tell our audience today, why should practices seek an ACRO RSS distinction in stereotactic radiotherapy? The key thing with, uh, with seeking distinction is for not the, just necessarily quality assurance and to know that what you have been doing um, is in accordance with the established best practices, but where your roadmap of, of the future is, where are you going with your next um, technological resources and investments? And having access to experts in the field um, is very, very instructive and helpful in that regard. So not only can one do an assessment of their practice, but they can also get advice for quality improvement for the future of their programs. So as the field of SRS and SVRT grows, the availability of an accreditation program specific to its unique requirements becomes even more important. This accreditation option is a great way for practices to independently evaluate their radio surgery programs and showcase their expertise. It also helps patients and caregivers identify centers of excellence. So it sounds like this would really improve the outcomes for our patients. Jarek, do you have anything else you would like to add? Yeah, I just uh, would like to point out that there, there's no uh, subset of radiation oncology that has been evolving faster than radio surgery over the last few years. Uh, there's uh, 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 ever evolving indications for radio surgery and the technology and the precision with which we deliver radio surgery is continually improving. And to be, uh, for practice to be uh, up to date on the latest uh, quality assurance 
to ensure that their patients are getting the best treatment and the best quality care, I think is very important. And that's what the RSS ACRO distinction uh, uh, helps provide. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is, you know, the, this distinction is really uh, a gold star uh, uh, for a practice. Uh, this really is designed to showcase that a practice has a, a, a specific expertise in radio surgery, something to, that the practice can showcase and be very proud of to distinguish that practice from other practices in the area that may not have this, uh, their, this uh, kind of expertise. That's really good information. Thanks for that. I don't want to get into weeds and get lost here, but I was hoping the three of you could give us a little bit insight into what the review process that has been developed looks like. Um, what are the standards for this stereotactic radiotherapy distinction? What can programs expect with regard to the medical chart and physics review that they're being, uh, being asked to undergo? And how does this distinction extend ACRO's accreditation for a practice? So let me start by uh, uh, talking about a, a little bit about how this couples with ac the standard ACRO accreditation. So practice seeking this distinction would, uh, would apply for both standard ACRO accreditation and the distinction. So they would undergo standard uh, uh, accreditation process. That involves three uh, uh, sort of uh, pillars or, or areas of review. One is the administrative review. Uh, the second is the physics review. Uh, both of those are done either through an on-site visit uh, or more recently through a, a comprehensive virtual visit, uh, uh, which is as comprehensive as the site visit. Uh, the third aspect of the review is the medical chart review. Uh, this process is entirely digital. Uh, we no longer sit in a room with uh, a bunch of paper charts. Uh, we've modernized this process. And by uh, doing an entirely digital review, we're able to organize our reviewers into uh, disease site specific teams so that the reviewers have uh, uh, particular expertise in those disease sites, as well as the ability to re-review charts so that there is uh, a transparency in our review process and an elimination of bias. The way uh, RSS uh, uh, ACRO distinction uh, couples with the standard uh, ACRO review is that they will happen at the same time. Uh, the physics review, uh, uh, the uh, virtual uh, review will uh, occur in conjunction with the RSS physics review. So if there isn't an, an, any additional time that the practice needs, uh, needs to put in, uh, they will just uh, address the different, different aspects of the criteria. As far as the medical chart review, that is also coupled together, meaning that uh, we will select charts that are specific to radio surgery for that are uh, that's being sought after uh, for the distinction, and those will be used for both the standard ACRO review as well as for uh, the distinction in radio surgery, uh, so that uh, uh, the practice uh, does not have a redundancy in what they need to do to achieve uh, both ACRO accreditation and uh, uh, radio surgery distinction. And maybe uh, Simon uh, uh, or Stan, you can talk a little bit more about the specifics of the criteria uh, for the RSS distinction. Yeah, so for the uh, medical chart reviews, we've determined that since this is a new program, we will focus on six commonly treated disease sites, which include CNS or brain, spine, liver, pancreas, and prostate. And each disease site has a dedicated uh, review team and a team leader. For each center, a minimum, no matter how many um, sites are being reviewed, a minimum number of charts being reviewed will be five. And with at least uh, two charts per disease site. An attempt to represent a patient mix of practice will be made by the accreditation staff when selecting charts to be reviewed as indicated by Dr. Happel. And the reviews are scored against established chart review measures. And these measures have been developed by the disease site teams, which are thought leaders and experts in the field of SRS and SBRT. 
clinical performance measures, including the documentation of the clinical parameters and the technical aspects will be evaluated and scored for each chart. If a minimum standard is not met, a recommendation for provisional accreditation may be given for this section and the concerns and recommendations will be communicated to the center. And if the center still fails to rectify the issues, a designated, I mean, a designation of a denied accreditation will be given. So um, in terms of the specifics of the scoring, what is different from the ACRO um, scoring itself is for this SRS SBRT distinction in practice accreditation, the, for each chart, the center has to get at least 80% of the designated uh, full score for the technical component in order to pass, and the minimum passing score is 80. So, Stan? So uh, as Dr. Heppel described, uh, the physics component, um, it will be entirely uh, uh, in, in participation with and in unison with the acro physicist who will be on site or has been virtually uh, virtual in these uh, last uh, year or so. Um, and so uh, we would participate uh, either one or two of us from RSS during that component, during that portion um, that will uh, have stereotactic uh, discussed. And uh, we would be available to not only review the program, make recommendations and uh, discuss a uh, roadmap uh, of future um, uh, changes that might be uh, of interest, um, but uh, it would basically be uh, focused on that particular area um, uh, by the physicist. That's really great information. It's a way to recognize how great some of our practices are. I wanted to ask everyone where we are with the rollout of this new distinction program and how is this being received by the membership of both organizations, ACRO and RSS? So uh, I, I can start uh, addressing that question. Uh, uh, I, I think the, we, we've rolled out the program. The program is uh, currently live and uh, uh, it has been very uh, well received uh, uh, and as uh, multiple practices have been interested and have uh, uh, already enrolled in this pro uh, process. Uh, two practices are currently uh, uh, in the process of review uh, and there are several uh, practices that are in queue. Uh, so uh, uh, practices across the country have been very excited about this program and we're very excited to offer it. And no question, uh, RSS is indeed uh, excited about participating and um, uh, continuing with this uh, wonderful partnership. Yeah, I trust that with this uh, partnership, we'll be able to advance the field of um, SRS and SBRT by improving the quality of the process itself in multiple centers getting involved in this um, program. Okay, that's really good. Before we wrap this up, I did wanna come back to one question with this panel that we have here today, are there any predictions for who's going to win the next World Cup? England. Fraser? I, I have no comment on that. I'm not, I don't want to get in trouble. Ah. I think I would have to go with England as well. All right. So it looks like, Jarek, what do you think? I, I think it should be USA, but uh, uh, they're, they're struggling on the world stage. Yeah. Uh, so... Probably Brazil. Oh, yeah. I'll go with Brazil. So it's two yeah. Brazil and two England. And I think football is coming home again. Oh, I can't wait to be back in person with everybody again. I'm so excited to have those days come back. Mm -hmm. This has been a terrific podcast today. I just wanted to make uh, everyone aware who's listening to this that additional information regarding this ACRO RSS distinction and stair tactic radiotherapy can be found at www acro.org slash SRT. I wanted to thank everyone for being here today. We hope you've enjoyed this program and they, you have an interest in this topic or seek or will be seeking this special distinction so that your organization can get a badge or a gold medal put on their office door. Again, thanks to the production team for making this possible. And I look forward to seeing everybody at the annual meeting in March in Fort Lauderdale. Stay safe.